Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Friday edition of Video Clips. And um, I have usually I cover consequences on uh, Friday. And I will get to that. I have a couple of stories to share with you that I think are kind of important. But um, before that, just a couple of things. Um, I'm hearing from a lot of you who are interested in careers, uh, some who are health professionals who want to be doing something, anything but what they're doing in healthcare right now. And others of you who are saying, I've always wanted to do something in healthcare, but I don't know what that would be. So tell me what my options are. And um, we do offer several different types of training programs. Um, one is a, a training program to teach you how to do what we do here, which is health consulting, health education, helping people make good decisions. We also have an alternative to traditional dietetics. And uh, I'll just mention that um, we have some wonderful dietitians uh, here at Wellness Forum. We, we employ dietitians, they're terrific because they're not practicing like traditional dietitians. And, um, but having said that, a lot of people who would like to have a, a nutrition degree, particularly if they're a little bit older are saying, you know what, I just know that I, I don't know that I wanna spend four years learning and spitting out the dietary guidelines that the USDA puts out. And I don't really think I wanna learn how to do tube feeding and institutional food management. And I don't know, working as an intern for 900 hours, you know, in something like that, it's just not for me. And we do have an alternative to that. And uh, it's called the Nutrition Educator Program. So if you wanna talk about, if you're not in healthcare, you wanna do something in healthcare, or if you are, a healthcare professional and you're saying, I, I think I'm finished doing this the way I've been doing it. And I want to do something different now. My email address is pampopper at msn.com and do feel free to email. I'm happy to talk to people. I leave time for that every week. Um, some aspects of my life are pretty normal, like what I would normally be doing if it wasn't all this stuff, if there wasn't all this stuff going on. And then my book, COVID Operation, worked very hard on this 455 pages I think it is with 677 references a very very good story about what happened why and what's coming next and so um, you can order an autograph copy from us or you can go online and buy an ebook or a paperback on um, platforms like Amazon and barnesandnoble.com and etc all right um, so let's talk about consequences, which are always uh, significant. Um, I know I've written to you before, and I know I'm one of the many, many letters you receive daily, but I wanted to reach out to you because my mother just got out of surgery in Miami, Florida. She's been dealing with chronic coughing since summer of last year. The Medicare doctors treated her for COPD and then COVID hit, everything changed. Her heart surgery was put on hold. They discovered two blocked arteries and a bad aortic, or aortic heart valve. Once hospitals were allowed elective surgery, she finally got her heart fixed. However, she's been forced to wear a mask in transit to the hospital and while in the common area. Also her hospital appointments, stays and surgeries have been unaccompanied. My father could never be with her. Today was the day they finally scheduled her for a biopsy of a mass they saw back in October, less than two centimeters on her left lung. I spoke with her yesterday. She was upbeat and saying how cute her surgeon is. She's 83 years old. Biopsy, that's easy, right? I called to find out how it went and much to my surprise, the surgeon tells me he removed her lower left lobe and part of her upper left, removed her lymph nodes, sent to pathology and she has cancer, I'm shocked. My poor mother. Alone in the hospital ICU bed, her husband of 58 years cannot be by her side. I cannot be by her side. Her son cannot be by her side. She doesn't use a cell phone. There's no FaceTime with her. How evil have we become? She will be spending the next week by herself, having just been told she has lung cancer and we can't be there with her. Pam, my parents left Cuba because they hated communism and government control. Why is this happening in America? My parents didn't come here to be told that they couldn't be by each other's side during times like this. I was raised to believe in America's greatness. There's nothing great about how we're treating the elderly. Shame on hospitals, evil, plain and simple evil. Praying she will get through this week by herself, alone in a hospital bed without us by her side. And I have friends that this has happened to as well. And she's right, it's abuse, it's elderly abuse. And I've said this many, many times. I think that if we asked elderly people 
you have a choice. You can take a risk. You may get the virus if you see people and have people around and that sort of thing, or you can be by yourself and avoid you know, as much as possible the risk and be alone for months and months and months. I don't know any older person in my life who would have chosen that. None of the ones who are crying when we talk on the phone to them are answering that that's what they want. So anyway, just very, very sad, very inappropriate. And I think that one of the things we have to look at is the one of the you know um, metrics of a society. One of the things you look at is how it treats its most vulnerable people, and is anybody okay with the way that this person and tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of older people are being treated? And for people out there who think that that um, this is serious, this this flu, this virus. Do you think that this collateral damage is acceptable? I haven't had anybody say that. By the way, one thing I'll comment on is that I enjoy civil discussion with people who disagree with me. I've never had a problem with that. What I don't understand is people who in the past I thought actually were interested in science sending me email equivalents of screaming at me with no data to contradict anything I've said, just screaming at me. Um, through email, and, and I think, oh my gosh, you, you know, you think that's the way to solve this, is to scream at people and abuse elderly people? You think that's the right way to act? I mean, you know, people accuse me of being inappropriate. Really? <laughs> you, you think that's appropriate, what I just described? All right, um, and then this is a, another story that I think is very indicative of what's happening to people. I've been following you since the start of the pandemic. You saved my life in so many ways. You're keeping me sane. Yeah, I guess you guys are keeping me sane too. Um, it gives me a reason to get up in the morning and that's important. I've listened to every single one of your videos. You would not normally find me on YouTube and English isn't my first language, but for some reason you caught my interest back in March. I'm so grateful for your videos. Listening to you and others who are on the same page has kept me alive. I've lost relationships over several with several close family members and friends due to disagreements related to COVID, masks, lockdown, so thank you. I'm a dancer, musician, and a music teacher in a public school. And I won't say where. I teach grade four to eight. This is my 11th year teaching at the school. I've come to really love this community. We're not in the richest part of town, a lot of poverty, lots of broken, unstable families, but our school is a safe and happy place for all. And many of my students, the music program, and for many of my students, the music program is the reason they come to school. I've had many former students come back to visit me and tell me that I saved their life because of music. I love my kids and I love my job, which is why I have a lot of concerns about the restrictions the government has placed. We're not allowed to sing or play instruments, even though the research is showing that it can be done safely. My choirs and bands are cut just like that, gone. Normally my summer and weekends are filled with performances. I can't even describe the pain I feel every single day of not being able to perform and rehearse with others. I feel like my soul was stripped away. I knew music was an important part of who I was before the pandemic hit, but now I realize it even more. Music brings such joy, why take it away from us? As of today, our government has implemented another lockdown. They're calling it Code Red. Thankfully, this time schools are staying open except for the ones with quote unquote outbreaks. My students suffered so much during the first lockdown, I could write a whole essay on the negative effects the lockdown had on my students. Some are suicidal. Currently a boy in grade five and a girl in grade seven. All my students have so much stress, anxiety, and fear with respect to lockdowns and school closures. Masks became mandatory here everywhere on September 28th. Since then our cases have increased, but of course the blame is being directed at the 20% who aren't wearing a mask. I cannot wear a mask. I cannot breathe in a mask. I have issues with my lungs and I have a heart condition that makes it difficult to wear a mask. I've been bullied and yelled at almost everywhere I go. Grocery stores, the gym, school, I cry every day. I now know what it feels like to be disabled. It feels like crap. There's no proof that masks are an effective way to pre prevent the spread of a virus. Why the government? Why is the government forcing them? I do not understand. So, um, I, I, I don't even know what to say about that. We have children, uh, I think the CDC released data saying that 25% of, um, of all adolescents and um, young adults are considering suicide, um, are the people who are 
for this lockdown and all these policies, you think that's okay? I want, um, I really want somebody who um, is in favor of all these policies that I've been speaking out against. I really want that person to come forward and say to the public, um, address all these things that we've brought up, the, the job losses, the suicides, the overdoses, the violence, the, uh, the children who are going backwards academically. I really want somebody to stand up there and, and read off of a list, okay, that is supported by evidence and say, actually, I am okay with this. I think that all of this is okay. Do you notice that none of them ever do that? They never do that. They're all about screaming at somebody not wearing a mask. They're all about screaming at somebody who doesn't support the government. But I am looking for the first one who's willing to get up there and look in the camera and say, I know people are killing themselves. I know children are being abused and terrified and suffering psychological damage. I know people have lost their livelihoods and they're depressed and they're never gonna be able to get their businesses started again. I know that the unemployment rate is through the roof. I, I want them to list all that and then say, that is really okay with me. I am for that. I haven't seen the first person do that because they're cowards. They're cowards. It's real easy when the only thing you have to do is scream at a person not wearing a mask or scream at somebody who's saying, this is dreadful, take a look. But I wanna see one of these people who says, this is all okay with me. And you will never see that because they're cowards. They know that if they did that, they would be vilified. They would be the people being screamed at by just about everybody. Well, that's the end of my editorializing. Sometimes I can't help myself. And uh, by the way, somebody um, wrote to me. I just uh, finished this uh, the week with this and uh, took me to task a little bit for sometimes appearing angry. And uh, I just want to know how you cannot be angry at this. How, again, I come back to how do you listen to this stuff and say, you know, well, you know, all things considered, stuff happens, you know, what, what is the right response? I just can't fathom the right response is A-OK -okay with me. So anyway, I'm going to stay angry. I don't always, I don't always have to be angry on YouTube, but I'm going to stay angry about it. It kind of makes me get up in the morning and feel like I need to do something about this, and I'm doing my best to do that. All right, that's it for now. As usual, uh, pass this on to others who you think would enjoy watching it and learning about what's going on in our world right now. Have a great uh, weekend, and I will be back to you next week with more news.